Hey everybody, this is Sahish Shashtari. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a sliding sidebar menu similar to this one. So you have this menu button that if you click, it opens up this sidebar using some kind of animation, and it also pushes the page content to the right. Clicking on the close button or the overlay should close that sidebar using the same kind of animation. Before jumping into code to see how to implement it from scratch, let's dissect this example. So in the Elements Inspector Dev tool, you can see that I have three elements in the body tag. I have the sidebar menu, the overlay, and the page content. Now the page content contains the content that you would usually add to the body element. So it's just your normal content for your page. The overlay is this extra layer displayed above the page content when the sidebar is open. And the sidebar menu is the sidebar itself. The key idea to implement this kind of interaction is to create a styling for each state this user interface has. And in this case, we have two states. The idle state, which is when you first load the page, and the sidebar open state, which is when the sidebar is open. So when the sidebar is open, we should have a different kind of styling applied to the sidebar element, and to the overlay element, and to the page content element. The way to specify what the current state is, is by setting a class to the body element. So look how the class of the body element it changes when I open up the sidebar. So now it has no class here, but when I click this, it sets it to sidebar open. So again, the idea is to create a styling for each element based on the current state. So now we understand how the whole thing works. Let's jump into the code and implement it from scratch. So now we can see an empty page here with a basic HTML file with just a bunch of defined CSS variables that we're going to use throughout this example. Let's start by adding the three elements we just saw in the working example. Let's add the sidebar menu, the overlay, and the page content. Now in the page content, we'll add a header element. And in that section, we will just put the menu button. So let's say button and it has the class of menu button. And let's use some SVG icon for the menu button. Now below the header, let's add some H1 element with page title and some paragraph below that. Now if we save, we should see this. Now let's make the page look nicer by adding some styling. So in the body, I'm gonna just reset the margin and padding to zero. And let's set its background to the background color variable. Let's set the text color to white. And let's set the font family to something better like the system UI font. Now let's add some padding to the page content. So I'm gonna just say page content and padding, let's set just 50 pixels. Now I'm gonna improve the styling for the menu button like this. So let's say menu button. Now let's set its background to what we have in the variables. Let's set the text color to white and add some padding to it. And also let's remove the border around it. And let's add some nice border radius to it. And also let's change the cursor to pointer when hovering over it. Also, it would be nice if we change the background color when hovering over it. So I'm gonna change it to what we have in the variables. So let's say bun menu button hover. Now let's set its background color to what we have there, which is button background hover. Now the next step is to style the sidebar menu. And I'm gonna start working on it as if it's open by default. And later we're gonna move the styling related to the sidebar open state to the appropriate styling selector. So let's start by targeting the sidebar menu here and set its position to fixed because we want to display it over the whole viewport. So let's say position fixed and let's set its top to zero, left to zero, and the height would be 100% and the width would be what we have defined here in the variables, which is 500 pixels. So let's say width var sidebar width. And let's set its background color to what we have defined here. 
Now, if you reload, you would see that the sidebar is displayed over the whole page. But what we want to have here is to also push the page content by the same amount as the width of that sidebar. And we can easily do that by setting its translate property to the same amount of that width. So let's target that page content, which we have here. So let's go to the page content styling here and set the transform property like this. So let's say transform, translate X, and let's move it to the right by the same amount as the sidebar. And since we have that value in a variable, we can just reuse it here. So let's say sidebar width, and let's say. Cool, so now we can see that the page content has been pushed to the right. Now let's display the overlay on top of that page content. So let's go to styling and style the overlay like this. So first, we're gonna set its position to fixed, and top to zero, left to zero, and the width and height would be 100%, because we want to cover the whole area. And now let's set the background to some transparent black color. So let's say background, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and 0.5. Now if you reload, you would see that the overlay is not displayed the way we want it. What we need here is just to display the overlay on top of the page content, but below the sidebar. And we can fix this easily using the z-index property. So let's set the z-index for the overlay to 1 and the sidebar to something higher than that. So let's set it just to 2. Cool, now it works the way we expect it to. Now let's add the close button to the sidebar element. So let's go to the sidebar menu and add a new button with the class closed menu button. And also let's use some SVG icon here. Now if you save, you would see it like this. But I want it to have the same styling as the menu button, but move it to the right. So let's go to the styling of the menu button and add that close menu button to the same selector. So let's say close menu button. If you save, it would have the same styling. Now to move it to the right, I'm gonna just set its position to absolute and set its top and right to the appropriate values. So close menu button, position to absolute, top to 20 pixels, and right to 20 pixels. Now if you reload, you should see it displayed on the right. Right now we just have a single state, which is the idle state. But what we should instead do is to create another state for the sidebar open and move all the related styling to that state. And as I said in the beginning of this video, we're going to determine the current state using the class on the body element. And in this example, I'm just choosing to use the name sidebar open, but feel free to change it to whatever you want. Now, the way we can specify the state in the CSS code is by setting the selector of the body to sidebar open. Now, anything comes after that would be related to the sidebar open. So for example, the page content element should only be moved to the right when the sidebar open state is on. So let's target page content here and move this styling to this section. Because now in the idle state, the page content should be displayed from the very left. But when the sidebar is open, then we should move it to the right. And the styling responsible for moving to the right is this transform property. So if we move it here, then the page content would only move to the right when the sidebar open class is set on the body. But also let's specify what the transform should be in the idle state. And in this case, it would be just translate x0. So let's say transform translate x0. So again, this code is related to the idle state. And this code is related to the sidebar open state. Now let's do the same thing for the other elements. Now in the idle state for the sidebar menu, we should display the sidebar outside of this viewport. And we can do that by setting its transform translate x to a negative value. And this value should be the same amount as the width of that element. Now since this is the idle state for the sidebar menu, let's set the negative transform value here. So let's say transform translate x negative 500. Now in CSS, if you use a percentage in the translate property, it will be related to the width of that element, which means 100% is the same as saying 500 pixels because it's the same as its width. So what we can do here is just replacing this with negative 100% and that should work the same. Now again, this is the idle state for the sidebar menu. Now let's specify its sidebar open state below it. So let's say body.sidebaropen and sidebar menu. Now when the sidebar is open, we should set the translate x back to the original position. And the original position would be here is 0. Because remember, by default when you display an element, it just starts from the very left here. 
so its translate position would be zero. Now setting it to negative would just move it to the left and setting it to something positive would move it to the right. So if negative 100% moving the whole thing to the left, it means setting it to zero would just move it to the original position. So let's set its transform here to zero. So this is the sidebar open state. Now let's move to the overlay element. Now the overlay element should be hidden in the idle state, but only shown when the sidebar open state is on. So this is the idle state, and this means we can just hide it using display none. Now if I save, it will be removed, but we also need to define the sidebar open state. So let's say sidebar open, overlay, and it will be using body.sidebarOpen, overlay. Now, when the sidebar is open, then just set the display to block so it's displayed. So let's say display block. Okay, so now we have defined all states for all elements. Now, if you want to switch the sidebar open state on, we just need to add the class to the body element. So for example, if I do sidebar open here and save, it will get to this state where it's open. Now, if I remove that and save, it will close. But of course, we don't want to toggle it using the code. Instead, we should just toggle it when the button is clicked, and we can do that easily with JavaScript. So let's write some JavaScript code. I'm gonna add all the JavaScript code before the body closing tag. So let's say script. What we're gonna do here is grabbing the menu button using the menu button selector. So let's say menu button document dot query selector, and let's say menu button. Now let's attach a click event listener to that menu button. So let's say menu button, add event listener, click. And when it's clicked, I need to grab the body element and toggle the class sidebar open on it. And we can do that using document.body. Now this grabs the body element. Now let's grab its class list using class list. And let's use the toggle method to toggle some class on it. So let's say toggle. And the class we chose here is sidebar open. Let's say sidebar open and save. Now if I click on this button, it will toggle the sidebar class on the body element, which would set the sidebar open state on, which would modify all the styling for these elements, which means we see the sidebar open here. Now let's make clicking on the close button and the overlay works. What we need to do is to grab these elements, attach a click listener to them, and then just toggle that class. So let's go here and just grab all these elements. Let's say close menu button, and it will be the close menu button. And let's say overlay, and set this to overlay. Now, since all of these elements will use the same event listener code, which is just toggling that class on the body element, we can extract this code into its own function and just attach it to all the event listeners. So let's create that function, toggle sidebar open, and it will just do the same thing. So let's just get this code, paste it here, and let's replace this callback with the function name. Now we're gonna attach the same listener to all of them. So let's just duplicate this and use close button and the overlay here. Now, if we reload and try this, it should work. Clicking on this, it would open up the sidebar. Clicking on the close button would close it. And again, clicking on that would open it and clicking on the overlay would close it. So now it works, except that we don't use any animations here. So let's make it look nicer using some animation. And applying animation here is very simple. All we have to do is just to set the transition between the two states, the idle state and the sidebar open state. So for example, let's start with the sidebar menu. So now in the idle state, its translate x is negative 100%, but in the sidebar open state, it's zero, which means if we set a transition for the transform property, it will animate it. Let's try this. Transition and its duration would be half a second. And I'm gonna set its ease function to ease, and it will be just for the transform property. Now let's test this. Now opening the sidebar would only animate the sidebar, but we also need to do the same for the page content. Okay, so let's use the transition again, but for the page content. So again, it uses the transform property to change its position, which means again, we can use the same transition we used on the sidebar menu. So let's say transition, 0.5 seconds, ease and transform. Cool, so the animation now works for opening the sidebar and closing the sidebar. 
Now, one last thing I want to show you in this video is fixing this horizontal scroll issue. So when I open up the sidebar and try to scroll to the right, now this page content scrolls. But actually, when the sidebar is open, we should disallow that kind of behavior. And it's actually easy to fix. All we have to do is to set the overflow property to hidden when the sidebar is open. And we need to do that on the body tag. If this is the idle state for the body, all we have to do is to define the sidebar open state for it. And it's the same thing. Just say body.sidebar open. And now let's say the overflow to hidden. Now let's test that again. Open it. Try to scroll. It wouldn't now scroll until you close that menu and now it should work. I hope you learned something new here. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below this video. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.